started. Hi. Okay, good morning. Happy Monday. So happy to be with you this morning. Get my friends from Zoom in here. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Happy Monday. Thanks for coming back and joining me again this week. Hope you had a great week and uh, that you are um, able to reflect on some positive things that are starting to happen for you in 2023. I'm Anna Gibbs, and this is your weekly dose of Mojo. What is Mojo? It's kind of the secret sauce, the the energy, the stuff that gets you really going, right? So when you, let's put it this way, when you lose your Mojo, you know it. <laughs> so my goal is to help you keep that going. So thanks for being here. It's always an honor and a pleasure to have this session with you every week so we can talk about things that get you thinking, that encourage your growth, that help you to get clarity around your goals. I've been a professional coach for 12, almost 13 years now. So anytime that I can connect with others or do something to inspire you to take action, I'm fulfilling my purpose. So thank you so much for giving me that opportunity to coach you every week. So um, we're going to jump in now. And, um, you know, as always, if you want to grab something to take notes with, I think that when you can write some things down, a couple of things happen. One, well, first of all, you'll have the opportunity to look back on it, right? Because um, we can often forget what was said, but if we take notes, we can reflect on it. Then that gives you an opportunity to do something with it. Um, and certainly in the process of writing it down, you are connecting with your subconscious. And that's where this information, when it gets into the subconscious, is where you can really see change occur. So I'm going to encourage you to take some notes. So what we've been doing um, the last couple of weeks is talking about lessons from John Maxwell's best-selling book, uh, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. So if you're looking for another book to add to your personal growth plan this year, I highly recommend this. And, and I wanted to talk about this early on in the year because leadership is so important. And what a great topic to coincide with today uh, when this is being recorded on uh, Martin Luther King Day, right? Another iconic leader in our history. And here's what I, I wanna make sure everyone understands about leadership. It has nothing to do with title. It has nothing to do with your position in a company, organization, or group. It has everything to do with how you show up in life. And we all, as we grow our leadership capabilities, we'll see that that will have a direct impact on our ability to be successful. So regardless of how old you are, regardless of what you're doing in terms of a career, vocation, business, developing your leadership ability will open up possibilities for you in ways you can't imagine. So I felt it was really important for us to talk about it. And so in this book, John reviews 21 irrefutable laws that he feels are always present when it comes to leadership. And last week, we talked about two or three of them. We'll go through a couple more today, um, and we'll probably round off um, the month with another session on this next week. So I trust that you're enjoying this. So um, he goes through all of these different laws and helps you understand how you can apply them. So if you have any questions or comments, please, um, I would love to know what you're thinking if you want to use the chat either here on Zoom or on Facebook. And, um, you know, I'd be uh, really happy to hear what you're thinking or answer any questions you might have. So in this book, um, as I said, John collects the, this, uh, these key principles about leadership and gives you examples too of how different people are using those laws in, in their companies or in their career. Um, and if you're not familiar with John, he definitely is a leadership expert. I shared with you last week that I've had the um, just distinct pleasure and honor to be in his presence. I've, um, I'm a certified John Maxwell coach. I have been to many of his events. I've sat and had breakfast with him, um, talked to him many times, and he's really a remarkable person. And he's insightful in a way that I've never seen before. And I think that that's also an, an opportunity for all of us. You know, he really listens to people and he is very present in the conversation and he asks powerful questions. 
And so if you're taking notes, that might be something I'd write down that leaders ask powerful questions and leaders are very inquisitive. So if you're looking to raise your leadership lid in 2023, I think one of the actions that you might want to um, take on is your ability to ask great questions and your ability to really listen and be present in a conversation. Um, and so, you know, those are some things that I've really observed about John, and I know that makes him a great leader. Um, so in the book, he goes through these 21 um, irrefutable laws. And the, one of the ones that I want to talk to you today is the law of magnetism, the law of magnetism. And basically, when you think about the word magnetism, right, it's attraction. And a leader, a really effective leader should be looking to attract more leaders and develop more leaders. And, you know, if, again, as a leader, it's not, it's not about position or title, it is about influence, right? Leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. So obviously, if we are looking to fulfill our leadership capacity, uh, meet our leadership potential, really be an effective leader, then we know we have to connect with other people, right? Because if no one's following us, then as John says, we're just on a walk. <laughs> so we have to know that we can attract people, not just to us, but to the cause, the vision, right? Perhaps um, attract us so that we can make a difference in their lives, so that we can grow and develop other leaders. And that is the true measure of a leader. When they can make everyone in their space better. When as leaders, we can multiply for people, right? We can multiply the impact. And we know as leaders that every day is an opportunity to do that. That every day is, is really a chance to not only make ourselves better, but make the lives of other people better, right? Because leaders add value. So as a, you know, many of you own businesses, um, you know, as a business owner, this is important, right? Because you, who you are is what you attract. So the law of magnetism is really about understanding that and understanding that the first step in attraction, whether you're attracting people to your company to work with you or, or to buy with you, right, to, to use your services, um, that you have to be clear about who you are and what the values are that you stand for um, and what you put out energetically into the universe because what you put out is what you get back, right? So if you're looking to attract top talent to your organization, are you top talent? Are you showing up as someone who has the disciplines, the habits and the results of a top producer, right? Because like attracts like. I know that sometimes we hear things like opposites attract, but really like attracts like. So you have to take a step back and say, who am I? Who do I need to become to attract those top performers in my industry uh, to, to be a part of my company or, or my cause or my, my work or my you know, association, right? Like attracts like. So you have to be clear about that message because you can't attract people to your business if you can't relate to them. And if they can't identify something in you that is, is what they want to emulate or be a part of, or that it feels like you like have, you feel like you have, you're in the same um, space, right? In terms of your thinking. So that's number one. Um, now, something else too about the law of magnetism that I just mentioned is, you know, there's an opportunity for all of us to think about how we show up. So I mentioned earlier a personal growth plan, right? If, you, if um, you'd like to add this book that we're reviewing to your personal growth plan. I guess the question is, do you have one? What is on your personal growth plan? Are you intentional about growing this year and, and in what areas would you like to grow in? And of course, we, we could all agree that we want to grow, right? That's why we hang out in groups like this, why we're always willing to listen and learn. However, are you really clear and intentional about what that growth should look like, right? Is it, it's not enough to just say, well, I'm, I want to grow. I want to be further on December 31st, 2023 than I was on January 1st, 2023. 
Um, but what is your intention? Where would you like to see that growth? What areas would you like to grow in? And in, in the process of that is how you continue to level up and get better. And you'll be amazed at how you start to attract different people into your world. And, and on the flip side, you have to look at who are the people that I'm spending a lot of time with right now? And are they helping to, to lift me up? Are they helping me to grow in ways that will, you know, give me the, the tools to, to meet my goals and my, my own legacy, right? And so sometimes we have to really be honest that we have to add some new, new people to our circles so that we have other people around that can influence us because that's leadership and, and influence is something that we need as well, right? So that's that all ties into the law of magnetism. Um, another thing I think that ties into the law of magnetism is this, this concept, this, this um, a phrase, speed of the leader, speed of the pack. So we talked last week about the law of the lid. And basically we talked about wherever your leadership capacity and capability is at any moment is basically the lid that is put on any organization that you run or are part of or group. So as you raise your leadership lid and you raise your ability to make an impact, be effective, be uh, an influential leader, you raise the capacity of others around you because leaders grow other leaders. So you know this ties in again to the law of magnetism and that the speed of the leader is the speed of the pack. So you only have to look as far as the leader and the leadership to figure out where this group or company is going, right? So as you are continuing to move through the first month of the year, ask yourself that question, you know, where are you headed, but at what speed are you headed? And please understand me, I am not talking about a frenzied rush to the finish line in any way. I am not talking about uh, not having purpose and, and, and you know, applying uh, strategy and systems to things. But at the same time that we're doing all of that, we must have a sense of urgency about where we're headed because the sooner we get there, the sooner we can figure out what to do next. So there is an importance around that. So speed of the leader, speed of the pack. And I love the law of magnetism, right? Because again, who you are is who you attract. Who you are is who you attract. Now, another law in the book that ties into this conversation or the things I'm highlighting for us this morning is this one, the law of the inner circle, the law of the inner circle. So we just talked about influence, right? And the power that we all have to influence each other. And we have many, many people in our lives. And we have, when we look at those people, there are layers of relationships there. There are differences in the relationships that we have. And we'll always have some of our oldest, closest friends, dear family members. And then there's something about the inner circle. And this is something that I continue to work on too. But let me ask you, who is in your inner circle? Who is part of that tribe that is the trusted advisor group for you? Right? Leaders have to recognize that this inner circle can really help us take things to a new level and can really help us understand things and break things apart and, and problem solve in ways that will move us along a little faster than if we tried to do it on our, on our own. And so the law of the inner circle says that a leader's potential is determined by those closest to him. I think it relates back to the lid, right? So you recognize that great things take place usually in groups, right? I mean, we, we have the ability to do amazing things ourselves. And yet we know that when we come together, that's where we can really multiply our, our effect. And so who's in your inner circle? Who do you turn to for advice? Who do you turn to for support? Uh, who do you turn to to gain insight and experience in all different areas of business, all different areas of finance, different areas of your personal growth, spiritual growth, right? Health, wellness, who's in your inner circle? So if you were to interview wildly successful people in any industry, I believe every one of them would tell you, yes, I have an inner circle. 
I have a trusted group of advisors that I can talk to about all these different areas of my life. And that can create an exponential effect in terms of your growth, right? So to ask yourself, who do I want to surround myself with? Do I surround myself with other leaders? Do I surround myself with forward thinkers? Do I surround myself with people who always look for solutions rather than focusing on the problem? Do I surround myself with people who have achieved things perhaps greater than I have yet or who have achieved the things that I aspire to do, right? Um, because going it alone can be a long, hard process. But knowing that you could follow in the footsteps of, of some other people and learn from them and more than likely probably learn from their mistakes too, uh, that that's something that is, I think, profound in a sense that you, you know, you, you will gain such clarity, insight, you will have uh, the ability to see things that you couldn't see on your own, you will have people share their vulnerability with you that in turn, hopefully helps you to see that you can be more comfortable with yours. Like, it's just, it's just a catalyst for amazing growth. So if, if, if this is resonating with you, let me know that. But more importantly, what will you do with this, right? So how will you start to identify and, and create your own inner circle? And, and in doing that, will you suddenly become part of someone else's inner circle too, right? So I think that when we look to achieve goals and big goals, especially uh, going it alone is scary. And I think when we have a, an inner circle of people that we can turn to, uh, we can see that they can give us emotional support, intellectual information, they can share experience with us, they may even give us some credibility, they might connect us to other people. Uh, and so that to me is, is priceless. So that's the law of the inner circle. The law of the inner circle. Okay, so here's one more for today. Um, and this is the law of, we talked a little bit about this last week, the law of addition. And um, we talked about adding value to people's lives. And again, today is a day that we honor Martin Luther King and his legacy. And um, I don't know if you know this, but Mar the Martin Luther King Day is always on the third Monday of, of January. And it's the only national holiday that is also decreed a national day of service. So I think that this is just a, a great a way to connect to today and for us to realize that leaders are always willing to serve others and leaders are always willing to add value by serving others. So how will you add value to someone's life today and how will you find a way to serve, right? So you could go out and, and do an act of, uh, an act of kindness. Uh, you could make a donation of time or money. You could... Um, you know, call someone that uh, maybe needs your inspiration today, your guidance today. How will you add value to others? And this relates to the law of addition because the applying the law of addition to your life is doing just these things. And what it does is it adds to us as much as it adds to the other person. And so when you ask yourself about your leadership ability, Ask yourself about your leadership attitude. What is your leadership attitude? Because the attitude we want to have as leaders is, is we want to be of service, right? That's where the term servant leadership comes from. And so by putting other people first, I believe you'll get everything you want in return. But when we start with us and we start with the filter of what's in it for me, what do I need? Um, I feel that we can get off track very quickly. But when I push myself over here for just a second and, and ask myself, what can I do for you today? In helping you get where you want to be, I will get where I want to be. I, I've experienced this all the time. I'm fortunate to say probably daily that as I help other people, I always get what I need in return. I always find that it adds value to me. So I, I have a couple notes on this one because I thought this was really important. Um, so here's a question to ask yourself. Do you know what the people closest to you value most? 
So if you were to think about your immediate family, your partner, if you think about your team or, um, you know, anyone that you work very closely with, do you know what each of them value most? And if you don't, how can you find out? I think it's a simple question, right? I think that it's a simple question that sounds like, what's the most important thing to you? What do you value most? How do I win with you? What do I need to know about what you hold near and dear to your heart? You know, you can form a question uh, to ask people in, in these different areas of your life that will help you identify what matters most to them. Because if you don't know what matters most to them, can you truly help them and bring value to them at a high level? So I think that's a great question, right? So asking yourself, what do they value? Um, and so in doing that, I think you'll get a new insight. So another thing that you have to understand is that the law of addition is also going to help you, I think, be more clear about what you value most and give you an opportunity to attract more of those things that, that line up with your core values. And uh, we have a values exercise, by the way, on the Facebook page. Uh, if you go to Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs and you hit the files tab on the left of the page, you will see a values exercise in there. If you can't find it, just message me and I'll send it to you. But it's a great exercise. Um, and I did it for myself on New Year's Day. I do it every, you know, every year usually. And for me, the last several years, it's it's it hasn't changed. Um, every once in a while, the bottom seven, the, the order changes slightly, but for me, the same seven values continue to show up. So, but it can change over time. Um, and I think that's an important thing to know what your own core values are, right? So that you can uh, continue to pursue things that line up with your values, that you, know, you can attract things in your world that support your values. And so that you can live a life um, of design rather than by default. And you can live a joy-filled life that is meaningful and fulfilling and purposeful according to what matters to you most, right? Not what matters to somebody else, but what matters to you most. So that's always important. So the law of addition, right? Applying the law of addition to your life means that you ask yourself what your servants uh, heart, what your servant leadership mindset is, what your leadership attitude is about. Do you make a point of reaching out and helping other people? Do you show up and contribute and share thoughts and ideas? Um, do, do you ask yourself what is important to you as much as you might ask others what's important to them? So, so that's standing in that space and really coming of value. And when you add value and serve others, I believe we have the ability to change the world, honestly. If all of us could get up every single day with that mindset, how will I add value to someone else today? How will I help someone else? How will I uh, be of service? Imagine what could start happening in that ripple effect. Because as we put that out there, I, I know we will get what we need as well. And I think that's what Martin Luther King did. I think he came from, a, I think he was impassioned, you know, for his cause and, and knew that the only way to make change was for him to be, you know, of influence, to focus on leadership, to do good, and to inspire others to do the same and, and to change the way people think. And, and in closing, I think that's another thing that leaders do really well is with respect and with holding, creating a space for people to be who they are, leaders are also willing to help people think differently and look at things from a different perspective. And I know as a coach, that is something that I look to do. And if I can help you see something differently, what will come from that, right? So it's not always about being right or wrong, but it could be well, what if I go around the other side of it and look at it from a different vantage point? I'll have something different in my sight. And that gives me a different um, feeling, different uh, thoughts, different um, ideas on what I can do, right? So leaders also will help people think differently and think towards growth and opportunity. So um, I hope that you've enjoyed these last two sessions talking about leadership, taking some lessons from John's book. We can't go through all of them, but I, I do want to pull a couple out. So we'll have our final um, session on this book next week. And I look forward to having you join me there so we can round out the 
first month of the year with these great conversations. And if you're finding that this is valuable, um, please share it with your friends. I'm excited that we are entering um, soon. We're going to be celebrating our third year doing this, which is wild to me. And uh, I enjoy this so much. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity and uh, also helping me create some good habits here because um, I'll be honest, there are some mornings I'm like, oh, why did I commit to this every week? And as soon as I come on here and start talking to you, I'm nothing but positive and excited. And so by committing to you, uh, you've helped me be more disciplined on a lot of areas. So I love it. So we're working together to do great things. And that's really what life's about, right? It's just working together to figure out how we can master this thing called life and how do we you know, show up in a way that is, it's not just about, you know, sitting on, on a couch, being positive, waiting for great stuff to fall in your lap. You know, it starts with mindset and then it continues with action. And that's really what brings the results. So that's my goal is for, for us to create some thoughts and beliefs here, and then for it to inspire you to take action so you can see different results in your life. So go out there and make something great happen today. Thanks again for joining me. Have a powerful week. And I'll see you on the Facebook page and again next Monday. Thanks, everybody.